true views expressed by a teacher, true views expressed by a teacher outside a classroom, however offensive they might be to some, affect their freedom to do the job. Richard Lucas was a maths teacher in Edinburgh until he published comments on YouTube criticising the former Scottish Conservative leader Ruth Davidson for having a fatherless child. Ms Davidson is, of course, in a same-sex relationship. He's also described gay sex as being immoral. But last week, the General Teaching Council cleared him to work in schools again. I asked Mr Lucas if he's a homophobe. Uh, no, unless you want to define homophobe as believes the teachings of the mainstream Christian churches and most other world religions. You think gay sex is immoral? That by any modern definition really is homophobic, isn't it? Uh, that's your definition. You're declaring the Catholic Church homophobic, uh, mainstream Christian denominations homophobic, almost all Muslims homophobic. If that's the line you want to take, that's entirely up to you. But I don't think that's an appropriate definition of homophobia. Well, you don't think that saying gay sex is immoral is homophobic? Absolutely not. Okay. Do you? Is it? Well, I don't know. I'm asking the questions. Is it discriminatory? Discriminatory? No, of course not. Discrimination is to do with the way people are treated. So if I were to treat someone unfairly on the basis of my beliefs about homosexual sex, for example, then that could be classed as discriminatory. But merely holding a belief is not discriminatory. What, what, so treating them unfairly, perhaps like describing them as being immoral? That's not treating someone unfairly. Well, um, if someone's going to express moral opinions in a society, people who disagree and actually engage in those types of behaviour uh, might claim that that's you know, intolerant or unfair or discriminatory or whatever. But in an open society, we're allowed to criticise each other's behaviour, we're allowed to state moral opinions, uh, particularly when they're the teachings of mainstream religions. If you made a statement like the one you've done about race, you wouldn't be allowed near a classroom, would you? Uh, because there isn't a similar statement about race. I mean, the parallel is, is so poor, it breaks down at every possible point of the bridge. So the parallel doesn't exist. There could not be a similar statement about race. All right, let, let, me, let me just focus on the statement that, that, that you've made. The statement about, about Ruth Davidson having a fatherless child and, and the statement about uh, gay sex being immoral. You, you teach secondary school pupils, 15, 16, 17, 18 year olds, uh, a good number of whom inevitably will be gay. They have enough to contend with uh, in their lives. Do, do you really think it's appropriate for somebody who has chosen to broadcast these opinions to be a figure of influence in their lives? Well, the question here is to the two messages. There are two competing views of these issues in society. There's the liberal position, which is the official policy of the Scottish Government, the entire Scottish educational establishment, and it's what pupils are taught as fact all the way through school, and any dissent from it is completely eliminated, which is why I'm here uh, talking to you this evening. There's an alternative view that's held by a lot of people, uh, including, as I say, mainstream religious believers and a lot of other people as well. Now, both groups in this discussion, they both have the best interests of people at heart. They have a different vision of what the best interests of people are constituted by. So my view is indeed to promote the best interests of people, but I believe that best interests are best served by the teaching that I believe. But the problem with this is not the fact that you hold these views. You're, you're completely entitled to all whatever views you choose to have in a free society. The problem is that they're incompatible with being a figure of influence to adolescent uh, young people, are they not? Okay, so you're saying anyone who believes the teachings of the Catholic Church or the other mainstream churches or, or Muslim beliefs, whatever, but, they're unfit to be a teacher. But, but well, they can only be a teacher if they you, never say what they believe. You chose sort of to broadcast what you must have known were, would have been controversial opinions. Controversial, precisely. I mean, teachers can't express controversial views. Teachers are only allowed to parrot the lines of the educational establishment, in other words, the lines of the SNP. Is that the sort of society we want to live in? It's not just, the, it's not just, the, opinions. It's not just the opinions of the SNP, Mr Lucas. That's abject nonsense. It's the, it's the opinions of most mainstream political uh, parties at the moment, is it not? It's, it's the opinion of the majority of people in Scotland, but there's a substantial minority who disagree. Why did you choose to broadcast these opinions? Because I think they're very important for the, uh, for the well-being of our society. I think promoting uh, natural family and stable family life is very important for the future of Scotland. It's important for adults. But more importantly, it's important for the children and future generations in Scotland. So that's why it's so important. Because I put the well-being of the future generations as, I rate that as more important 
than me landing in hot water with the General Teaching Council of Scotland. Very so that's why I'm here today. Very briefly, do you think you'll teach again? Uh, I, I would be very surprised if any school in Scotland would employ me because the, uh, the sort of iron fist of the educational establishment just crushes anyone who holds the sort of opinions that I do. So I, I think it would be hard to foresee a school uh, employ me in Scotland, that's for sure. All right, well, we shall see. Uh, Mr Lucas, thank you very much for your time this evening. Thank you.